by Sweden, Italy at one and one, along with Germany and Norway. And winless, the US, Canada, and France all at zero and two. The other games in this sixth round at the Mecca, Scotland and Denmark, two of the teams at two and zero. Italy, Norway are one and one. The USA and France, both those ranked zero and two, so somebody tonight will win their first. Canada against Sweden, of course, is ours, and Germany against Switzerland. Switzerland, two and zero. The Mecca in Milwaukee, the former home of the Milwaukee Bucks of the NBA and the Milwaukee Admirals and the International Hockey Association as the opening ceremonies continue here. It's customary before every game to honor two of the rinks, and they are honoring Norway. Igor Ramsfell in his rink, and of course, Trina Trulsen from Oslo. National Anthem of Norway as the Norwegians are honored here before round six of this World Curling Championship in Milwaukee. You know those rinks very well, both Norwegian rinks, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. I spent uh, well, actually 11 straight years I went back to Norway and uh, Trina Trollson, as uh, Linda has alluded to, uh, you know, in our earlier telecast, she's a terrific player. Linda had a chance to play against her last year in the Olympics and, and she's... Uh, curled a number of times in the European Championships and so she's got lots of internet that's the one thing that we really haven't talked about Linda is the fact that the Europeans they do get lots of international exposure because they do go outside their country so often to play and they play they have their own separate championships of course the European Championships and then they do travel all throughout Europe playing a lot of competition so they it's not new to them to, to be traveling and and playing against teams from other countries there she is Linda <laughs> My teammate, Penny Ryan. Here in Milwaukee. Looking a little anxious. It's tough on the spectators, especially when things aren't going well for the people they're watching. Well, you know, despite the fact that this rink is zero and two, they still have a good sense of humor. Pat Ryan and Randy Furby, Donnie McKenzie, and Don <laughs> Walchuk, the second. Or maybe he has a nose for a win tonight. Who knows? <laughs> Now he's wearing the microphone for us tonight so we can mm -hmm. listen to what they're saying. I wonder if we can trust what they're saying. <laughs> Never know. He may tell a few lies with that nose. Yeah, without the nose. I don't know what looks really better. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, this is a very slippery surface. surface. It, another thing that'll be interesting tonight to watch to see what Pat does if he, you know, if he stays with the brush the whole game, Linda, or if he goes to this corner, yeah, which, he, thing. which he did. We could maybe just touch on that, uh, the rule differences here. This is not, uh, they play under the ICF rules and it's not the CCA. Uh, and we can use, it, the rule hasn't been changed in the ICF as it has been in Canada, that you can still use the either one of the two instruments, the, the brush or the broom, and you can switch in the middle of the game. And so what's the point? Something. Why would he draw it out then? If he's been brushing all the time, what do you, why would he remain with the corn? Well, he wasn't actually in one of the, in the his second game this morning, they used uh, the second game of Brown Robin, he used uh, uh, the corn mm -hmm. for a couple of ends. Tommy Sternan just <laughs> came out with a hot hand, and they weren't sharp. They, Pat was struggling to draw weight, and, and Tommy just, he didn't miss a thing. Canada has won the coin toss, and they will have last rock in this first end. So the Swedish lead is 27-year-old Mikael Jungberg. 
One thing the about show. the uh, sorry, Jack. One thing about the corn brooms is uh, I was watching them this m this morning in their game, and because the ice is still a little bit soft, when the corn gets into the ice, it's a little unpredictable for them, and they yep. lost a couple of rocks Stand that they were trying to get buried, and they actually overcurled no, because not. they were picking up the corn. So it's something you have to be careful about. You wouldn't just bring it out because you wanted suddenly the ice to swing. You'd have to really be wanting it out there. Well, I would think that you'd be. Well, there'd be less chance of doing it on this kind of ice. Yeah, it? you don't need it in this kind no. of ice. You get lots of movement. I mean, you would have done it if you had the opportunity at the briar, right? Yeah. And the ice ran a little straight in uh, Saskatchewan Place. For sure. John McKenzie makes the takeout, and the ring's wide open. If you're just joining us for the first time, for the first time ever at a world championship, they are using time clocks. Each team, 75 minutes, 30 seconds between ends five minute breaks after the fifth no timeouts and if they have extra ends if they go to an extra end they'll add 10 minutes to the 75 and it's a great thing i you know we were mentioning it during the uh, canada's win over over sweden uh, earlier today linda in fact uh, they were joking about it well you have 12 minutes to throw your last two stones tracy <laughs> was saying to heather but there's going to come a point in time when in fact if they get into a game with lots of stones and really crucial decisions that the uh that the play, you know, clock could become a factor. They could, and it's also nice to see the pace of the game has picked up a little bit from other years. They do watch the clock and try and keep the pace at a good one, and it makes it very interesting for us spectators. I think also we should mention here, Vic, that, you know, there's no point having the time clock in the rule without mentioning the penalty. And the penalty is, if you run out of time, then it's over. Well, in fact, that's right. You stop, you have no more time to throw, and if, you're be, if you happen to be leading, the other rink with time just throws rocks until to, they win. He continues to throw it. Right. I mean, it's awful embarrassing. If you, <laughs> if you were down yeah. six, you couldn't get six rocks in. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's Don McKenzie and his second stone. First stand action, sixth round of these World Curling Championships. Canada oh, right still on. looking for their first Need win. Pat Ryan lost his first two. Nice early indication. A little uh, rock out in front off the center. Put off the center line and Pat decides to go in behind it. Unfortunately, slips through the ring. Now you talk there. You see, uh, it's like he's tucking away his his baby under a blanket, Sorry. and uh, we're seeing an awful lot of that Sorry. now. Uh, trying to keep the rocks cool as he uh, puts it under a, some foil in the corner. Well, there's some concern about the lights here. Uh, the curtains feel that the lights are maybe heating the stones a little bit, and and it, uh, the lights also maybe creating a little bit of heat that is flattening the ice out. But it was fine on our afternoon draw. Going back to the earlier comments that Linda made about the corn broom, and, and, and he did as well, Vic, is that on ice that moves like this, you don't really need to. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose of the, a lot of teams, what they would do on straight ice. Uh, uh, they couldn't get any action on the stones. They would bring out the corn brooms and get some flake and get some strong ice and get another one move. Don Walshut, the Canadian second, and his first stone. Two rocks in play just in front of the house. It's off the center line, so something to work with here in the first end. Tom Thomas Harden is, uh, has lots of experience himself. He curled in the World Junior the year in a row. Two years Come in a row, 80 and 81. So. Come on! Oof. Good looking shot. And you know something there again, it, it just it, at the end, as you say, sometimes it just snaps over. But that, that's a great shot. I mean, he just sucked that right behind that those cards. So. Fights the top of the four. The Swedish second is Anders Le. He's a 27-year-old. They uh, were loose. I thought, I thought they looked really good before the game. They, they, you know, they were loose and they were ready to play. And you know, I got a chance to talk to the, all four of them. And uh, I think you'll see a different Pat Ryan team out here tonight. But they're going to have to play well. They are, but they can make all the shots. We shouldn't worry about them having to make draw shots because they can do it. And there's Liv right down on top. That's a beautiful shot. Now you've got the, the game is forced into the eight foot now. You know. Just uh, short. Then. Just short. For Don Walchuk and his second stone. Well, of course, they're trying to cover up shot stone. The alternative would be to go to the side because they do have last drop, but... That's a dangerous rock right in front of their red stone, the Swedish Yellowstone. Let's Sorry, just guys. cover that up a little bit and take the chance of getting the two points. And he comes up short. Yeah, it is. 
Got it outside net cross a little bit. We'll put then you can put the watch on a couple of these shots for us and we'll see what the time is. So we get a draw and yeah. how's your speech, Vic? Yeah. I think he's going to play the front one so that later they can play their other stones. Good thing. And if you think that I understood that and <laughs> translated, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> the three to third is Jan Olaf Nathayan. Not playing with a lot of weight. Get some movement, get some rocks moved around. Come here. And at least he can play a raise on it. The way they're overlapped now, there's no possibility of raising one of them back. So he's trying to get them moved around a bit. Now the purpose of that, Vic, as Linda mentioned, is that she, he could then now play the rock that's closer to the rings out in front. He could drive that back onto his own stone and try and remove the Canadian stone in that in that uh, manner. Before, when the stones were overlapped, he had no raise possibility. No, and actually it almost turned out that yeah. the other two stones were almost directly one on top of the other, so he could have driven them straight back. It's not yep. quite right. It was close. Randy Furby, the Canadian third, 29-year-old. This will be his first stone. Well, Pat's just throwing up another one up in front. You heard him say guard. Watch away. Where's he want to? Come around that. Back eight. Three. It's really curling. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. You want to get it over. You don't want to leave a double there. It worked out pretty well for him, Linda. Well, at what? least the two rocks are even. He didn't set up a potential double. We bought it to see down there. Well, all our Swedish oh, viewers across the country will be enjoying this. I'll go for the hit and roll, though. Bring it in here, the second red rock. Nassayen and his second stone here in the first game. Sixth round of this World Curling Championship. Canada against Sweden. Uh-oh. That really moved, too. Yeah. Maybe a spot in the ice, because those draws were really coming over. Tell us you have to guard that, eh? Me too. Or split it or something. I'm going to guard the shot stone. Stone sitting at the 9 o'clock position, just biting the forefoot. Canada line 1 and 2. Second stone for Randy Furby. Wait, Scared. Watch away. First thing he said was a little Watch tight. Away. Watch away. Playing the intern to stay down the center path. We have seen one rock stop out in the frosty area, so he wouldn't play the other turn, the outside intern. No, you'd have to go too far out, Linda. Too deep. You get this thin, you could get the double. Well, it's a special board, yeah. All right. It's a possible triple. It's hard on this uh, this ice to, to get a lot of movement out of the stones, but double's there for sure. Yeah, that's what we have, like you all like. I'm also the other one. The Swedish skip is a 27-year-old insurance salesman by the name of Thomas Norbert. And while he's had world championship experience at a junior level, this is his first at a men's world championship. He's looking for movement here. He wants to hit this spin if he can and come across the ring for the double. One and two and three. Yes, sir. Look at this. Got them all by Thomas Norbert. As he got all three, and now Sweden lies too. Take a look at this again, uh, Vic. They, you know, this is what I mentioned. The, the thin double was there for sure, and the possible triple. And you can see, he just catches at the front one thin, comes across the ring. There's the double. There's the triple. They're all moving now. 
And what a difference in the movement of the rocks, Linda, from our first day of here. coverage. Because I when know, those rocks were hit, they the weren't skating out. They were jumping, and they weren't moving at all. They weren't going very far. It would be really hard to roll those rocks far enough with the mushy ice we had. And yeah. now Pat Ryan, who yeah. a moment ago was lying three, faces two Swedish stones. What happened with that, Dick, is that guard came in way too deep. They asked for that rock out in front of the rings, top 12 foot, just a foot in front of the rings, and it came in too far. It's just an error, and it gave uh, Thomas Norvin a chance to, to play that shot, and he played it, he did, and he made it. Now the roll. We need the roll here, in behind the guard. No, oh, nose hit. Sits right there, top of the button. Started to move, but it's held up at the end. Men det löser den förra. Ja. Har man nära vad det har gjort så ligger han kvar bakom. Jo, vi får det där, men det är lite tur. Vi hade chansen att verkligen sätta dit. Det här blir lugnare, tänkte jag. Du kan se att the second man cleans the rock for him, gets it set, and Thomas gets in the hack, and he's gone. That's the final stone for Sweden here, and the first Canada does have the hammer. Get it by the guard. He does. Oh, no, oh just at the last moment. Just at the last moment. I thought it was by. I did, too. He did, too. He had a lot of weight in that shot. It just really curls there. And he could have even rolled away. He still would have had mm -hmm. one buried, but just couldn't get it by. Well, it's, he made a great shot with the triple, but uh, you know, Pat well, you uh, might be already. just made the mistake. Randy's rock just came in too deep and allowed that to happen. So uh, he got a little break hit with Thomas Northern missing his last shot, and so it's That's a draw, an open draw, and like Randy had to bite the forefoot for two. Full on the eighth foot. There's the situation. And Pat Ryan from his trunk lift position, the good flat swing. Doesn't get down on the hack yet, so is that back leg. Oh, wait, good. Oh, right off, right off. <laughs> they get it to the forefoot, they can pick up two. Look at everybody out. The two Dons and Randy Furby, and they're there for a pair and a good start for Canada here in the first end of their game with Sweden. Well, Johnny Walchuk's wearing the microphone for us out there, and you can hear the sweeping. You can hear them working on that one. Canada jumps in front quickly. 2-0 over Sweden. We'll have more. The Ryan Express looking to win their first, and right now looking good. Between Italy and Norway. Norway with the hammer. Final stone, Eigel Ramsfell of Oslo. And there are several Norway stones in the house, but this one hangs and hangs. He's trying to remove the red stone. Just can't do it, and it's a score of one for Norway. So the defending men's world champion, Igor Ramsdell, leads Italy, and Andrea Pavani from Portino Tempezzo, one nothing. Well, Thomas Norgren has a good great deal of knowledge of this game too and he's been throwing up corner Dick. guards and Pat's been running them off and that's what he does very well it's going to be interesting to see Dick if he can defend as well under these conditions as he did in the briar and we know how well he did it there yeah I mean, do, you, do you think that he's going to get into one of these where he's just going to try and peel rocks in his eyes or? well and he's got his two points and in this end uh, Thomas Norgan has thrown up three corner guards and they've run three corner guards off perfect right on. I might add John Walchuk until this one. Tough fell too. Fell back a little bit, he says. It's big weight, but they always throw that big weight when they're peeling rocks, so. Okay. This is kind of interesting. He said Thomas is playing the Another rock out in front to cover the corner, and he's playing it in front of the other stone. The tendency here usually is to go to the other side and play the corner on the other side if you want to throw up two of them. Thank you, the other ball. I get it, Okay. No, get on there. Anders Le, the 
Sweet is second, puts up another long corner guard. <laughs> The purpose for that, I think, is what Thomas is what he's trying to do. He's, he's saying, uh, you know, he's trying to get Pat to go in behind. That's exactly what Pat's going to do. And the thinking behind that, of course, is you don't mind doing some gambling as long as you've got the forefoot open. The gambling's on the edges. And now Ryan has uh, chose to go behind the long corner guard. And Donnie looks like he might be a little light here. I want to tell everybody that Scotland and Graham Adams from Lockerbie against Denmark and Tommy Stern, they blanked their first end. They're Scotland both, with the hammer. They're both undefeated, too, aren't they? Two and, uh, mm -hmm. two and zero. Yeah. Anders Liss is a beer salesman. He must be having a good time here in Milwaukee, though. No shortage here of... Uh, here, here in yes. Milwaukee. It does. Whoa. Well, they're trying to go around it, but you can see the results. An update for you. The game between the USA and France, and France with the hammer final stone of Dominique dupont Rock from Mejev. France is sitting one, and they have several other rocks in front of the house. I oh. think he thought he could maybe get more than one more in there, but just one is raised in, and it's a count of three. Three nothing France against the U.S. and Jim Vukic from Seattle, both rings. Winless in their two starts. Well, Thomas wanted to get in behind that uh, Canadian stone. The rock was just off the center line out in front, and there's nothing in the ring, so now Pat Ryan gets another chance with Randy Furby's first one, and here it comes. Yep. You can hear Don, Don Walsh go. starts brushing. Gotta go for Wade. Gotta go for Wade, he says. Lots of room, Pat informs him. Oh, stop right about sorry. here. Oof, sorry. Good shot, Randy Kirby. You hear Don say sorry. They, they just swept it a little too much. They just misjudged the wee bit. Sorry, Ron. Just a little too deep, Vic. Because it's just that much behind the tee line, is it? Yeah, it, well, it's on the tee line, but you take that stone and put it on top of the forefoot. Now it's got to be moved a little bit. And now, now, now if Thomas Stern, uh, Thomas Snarget sits on top of it. And I did get a time on that, and it's 22 and a half seconds from the first hog line to the house, so it's nice and clean. Mm -hmm. All you come in! Jan Olof Nassayev. Come in! Let's get off! Come in, Jan Olof Nassayev! Stay the way You and Sam back in your lot. He just moved, it made a great big move, we're halfway down. He's maybe a little light, too, I think, Linda. Good chance for Canada here now. There's the indication. Pat says, well, yeah, throw up the guard. <laughs> Lots of rocks in play, Vic. It reminds you of the skins. Terrific. The guard. Yeah. I mean, if from... Uh, from a spectator stator standpoint, this is what you want to see. You want to see lots of rocks in play, and uh, it's all uh, very good, and it's certainly technically very, very good to be able to peel rocks. But no, not this. This is this is what I think it's He's all it. about. No, huh? it's good. Well, you don't see triples like the one Thomas Norgard made in the previous end. If there are any rocks no. in play, and that's what uh, is exciting about the That rock stayed out in the Come on. Got a little lucky. Yeah, they got the tick in the roll. Starting the forefoot. Huh? You got a little hole there, Linda? What do you think? There is a hole. I think the thing they want to do here is if they don't get through the hole, maybe tick away one of the redstones and open the up a bit. Sweden with last rock here in the second end, trailing 2-0. Oh. I'm walking sideways again. Did you get it by? No, sir. And they, Thomas yelled no to start to start with, but then it just in the same spot it moved before. 
Yet uh, Ryan threw one down there that held. Maybe seeing again at the edge of the fork with that, that critical spot where it will run straight. Most of the play is inside the fork, the middle of the eight foot to the middle of the eight foot. In the ice, the frost builds up on the outside on the edges, and when you get out there, sometimes they'll do different things on you, Vic. One time you just get inside that frost a little bit, and across it comes. The next time you get it on the outside of it, it just hangs up there and runs straight down on you. Sorry? Aluminum is the sponsor. Aluminum. Sponsor. This is the sponsor. Keeps the cold, rocks cold. Yeah, I know, I know. I understand. It's a guard, eh? Pat's just playing a guard. He wants to play the other turn. This is a good look for our viewers to see. You can see the the moisture on the ice surface and the frost build up on the edges. It's a little softer here than we Randy than we've seen in either Kelowna or the Briar, of course, where it was pretty hard and straight. And you get an idea of maybe how, how warm it is because nobody or very few are wearing their extra sweaters. They're all doing it in uh, in t-shirts or their one of those polo shirts. Pat Ryan in his first stone here in the second day. Oh boy. An update for you, the game between Scotland and Denmark. Scotland with the hammer, and this is the final stone, second end for Graham Adam from Lockerbie. And he needed the hammer. Denmark is sitting two, and he had to just squeeze through this court. Executes a very good shot and stays for one. So Scotland ahead of Denmark and Tommy Stern. one nothing as they go to the third end. Well, that was good guard yeah, by yeah, Pat. It's a nice point to steal, and uh, you know, you got a nice jump at uh, 2 nothing, and uh, you're in a position now if you can just uh, throw up a couple guards and you steal a point. And that third point is a real nice one to have tucked away in your pocket. Thomas Dorgren and his first stone, yeah, the yeah, Swedish yeah, skip. Yeah, Playing the yeah. raise. Yeah, hey. Call for the angle. Ooh, good shot. Boy, that's two great shots. The triple he makes, and now he gets the raise takeout, and the rings are wide open. We're going to see some entertainment tonight. Here it is again. It's a good call by the third man. Just catches it on the outside a little bit. Had to curl a little bit more than this. Yes, they were calling the sweeping on, and again, it's so hard to anticipate with it swinging. Here's another look at it. Just had to come a little bit more, would have driven it straight back and been able to stay for shot. Pat has a chance, though, to get through the hole. It looks like he may be playing the raise, Linda. Now the raise. I think he is. The raise, yeah. Little left. Little left ice. There it is. He's going to raise his own red rock. The stone sitting just out in front of the ring, just off the center line. Brian, he's got lots to raise it behind, Linda. <laughs> it certainly does. And this has to come off center line before it really starts to make its move. Whoa! Lots of weight. Here it comes now. Whoa, Pat says. Lots of weight. We get a little lucky here. Uh, just had perfect weight. It just had to come Wait, a little bit more. I think it would have been the bath, but... So that center line now wide open, and we'll look for him to throw yeah, it through. Do you think, it. or is he going to be like the, you suggest, a... Or no, the third of Europeans no. to pick up the point here. I, I, I'm suggesting that, that uh, Thomas throws it through. As a matter of fact... <laughs> he may not even throw it. You don't see that very often. Usually the player will get in the hack and right. just throw it, but... Uh, or, but he just kicked it down. Del Blank, the second end. Canada continues to lead 2-0 over Sweden. Third end action from the sixth round of the 1989 World Curling Championships when we return to Milwaukee in just a minute. They win their third in a row, leading 3-0 as they go to the third. Here are all the scores still early in the sixth round of the World Curling Championships at the Mecca in Milwaukee. 
and Scotland leading 1-0 over Denmark, who now have the hammer. Italy needs the hammer. They trail Norway after a steal of 1-2-0. The USA behind France, 3-0 as they play the second. Switzerland, we showed you, leading 3-0 over Germany in our game after a blank. Canada by 2 over Sweden as we go to the third, and Sweden and Thomas Norgren will have the hammer. Well, Don McKenzie threw his first rock into the rings into the forefoot. It puts it behind the tee line. And Thomas Norgren just ignored it. And he's been throwing up corner guards ever since then. And Pat's been running him off. And he just saw him run another one off. And he just got enough. Just enough. <laughs> but it's gone. Will yeah. I hear? Curious about that, uh, the last rock that Norgren, Thomas Norgren didn't throw. I thought you had to throw everything. Well, I mean, even, even if you throw it into the board. Well, as Linda says, you're supposed to get in the hack and throw it. I, I, you don't see it. I don't think I've seen it. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it before, actually. And just uh, take it down. And, and I, it's kind of a courtesy thing, I think, mm -hmm. to get in the hack. Usually, even if you just throw it to the first pod line, you usually do something with it. I don't blame him for not wanting to throw it hard. It's a oh. whole pile of rocks, mind you. Some people might try to throw it through even to the <laughs> side, and it's not a bad idea to throw it too light so that it doesn't come come on. Mm -hmm. Thomas Norgren made an excellent uh, raise takeout to get himself out of a situation where he had a point scored against him. And uh, he now maintains last rock and he'll try and throw some corner guards. They know the game well, the Swedes, as do the Swiss, as do the Norwegians. Yeah. Well, we made that comment earlier today, in fact, that, you know, from a strategical point of view they know the shots to call now you you, you rarely very rarely see them doing something that you go hey what's going on here i couldn't throw it one way thomas was talking to pat i don't know exactly what he was talking about but he, he threw up the corner guard a couple times and this is a pattern that you see with all the top canadian teams as well is that they'll throw up the corner guard three or four times and then when that doesn't work They'll then go to the freeze. That was the danger of letting that rock slip behind the T line. Pat wanted it in front of the T line. It just uh, Don McKenzie's first stone just slipped behind the T line, and so now we'll play the freeze as opposed to the corner guard. So the freezing to a stone that's sitting at the back of the forefoot, about the seven o'clock position. I, I, Our viewers should always remember we refer to the face of the clock, the twelve being at the top, and you move around. This is going to curl too much. This ice is really tricky tonight. It's swinging a lot, it's and of course the freeze home. is a difficult shot anyway, but to get the proper angle of those two rocks is extremely tough tonight. But this is one of the arts of the, of the sport, Linda, that I think that's kind of disappeared, uh, you know, the last number of years. It's, you can feel it? You know, to be a top skip, you have to be able to read ice, and uh, granted, there's a frost line out here that makes it very difficult, but it is, you know, part of the game, reading ice and being able to maintain and concentrated on, on it through the whole game. I, I, you know, skips I've played for, top skips I've played for through the years, when you leave a curling oh game boy. and you're totally exhausted, just, it's from nothing else but from just concentrating, you know, Stop. and trying to remember all the little things. Good shot by Randy. Thomas Norton is getting himself in a little bit of trouble here. I'd be, I think I'd be tempted to run after that front one. He doesn't have a very good angle on the back one. The no, front one is sure really doesn't. covering it nicely. Ten foot lower. Yeah, I think. There's a good look at it from the top end there. This is a very dangerous shot. You don't make this shot, and Pat Ryan's able to run this right down your throat. Jan Olof Nasea. And you should play the takeout there, and even if you don't get the double, if you roll and you stay in the ring, and Pat's forced to play it. At least it opens up the forefoot. You know? But if you, I guess if you tuck it right in behind, but going to get a bye. They had the perfect line. This shows how tough it is, though. They were sweeping it properly, they were judging it properly, and it just curls so quickly. It nuts that other, front rock. There's other one at the top of the house. Well, in any kind of ice, um, those are things that happen. That's what makes the game so fantastic. He rolls in behind that front stone. Oh, 
staying out a bit. Ooh. Okay. So Tom, Tom this morning will, I think, will just. Uh, well, he's going to draw around it again. I, I'm surprised it's so late in the end. I would just Come go up and run this one off. Yeah, I think, I think so. his team is saying hit. <laughs> he sometimes gets that message, no matter what language it is. Let's not fool around anymore. Well, let's talk about the reason behind this now. The reason being is that, you, you know, you, there's only three rocks to come, uh, and so you really haven't got anything to, any way of setting something up or developing Whoa. it. Yes, if Whoa. you make a great come around Whoa. there, you might get your extra point, but it's very dangerous. So I think now what you do is you just kind of play this end out and, and hope to maintain Whoa. last rock and then start over again That's with your lead man and then your second Whoa. player the next end. They're okay. certainly getting lots of rocks in play, so they have a good opportunity. Update for you, the game between Scotland and Denmark. Scotland leading 1-0 as they play the third final stone for Tommy Stern of Denmark. They made some great shots. They were coming around the corner guard. He had a hit for two. He makes contact with Scott Ross, but he's going to roll over, and he rolls too far. Picked up one, so Scotland and Denmark are now tied 1-1 as they play the fourth. We might talk about that Danish team a little bit, uh, Vic. Uh, uh, they have uh, five players, and they rotate throughout the... Uh, the event, uh, they don't consider it an extra uh, spare. It's, it's a fifth team member, and the only team a member on the team that doesn't change is Tommy Stern. They use all five players. And of course, it's within the rules, and uh, gotta go. It's, it's an interesting concept. Well, I think if they're used to it, it's fine. It's hard for a team that's always played with the same four players and only brings a reserve to the championship to suddenly bring them in for a lot of games. The center, eh? so if they play together a lot, there's no reason why they shouldn't, and probably in the long week that they have to play here, they'll be a little more rested. And the other thing about it, Linda, too, is that the age of specialties. You know, there's specialty shops all around the world, and, and everybody, in this sense, you know, you might get, for example, you might to have a team player that, that plays the soft game very well, and and then in reserve, your fifth member yeah, might be a person that up. really can run rock well, throw the big, big weights well. So you, you'll use that, you'll use that, uh, yeah. you know, in certain situations. If yeah. you get a four or five point lead, you might bring the other man in. Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! I'm waiting for the time when you can bring in your fifth player in the middle of the game, like a designated hitter, you know? Just call for the hitter out of the stands, and in they come. Well, you can actually, Linda, you could bring the player in the middle of this game. You just can't return yourself. Right. I know. Uh, yeah, uh, then I'd come back. Oh, you'd want to come back in. And then they'd come back. The left-hander. Yeah, Give me the left-hander. Left <laughs> Pat Ryan, and this will be his first stone. Taking a little... Not quite as much time as he usually does, but we do have the time clocks now. The famous Pat Ryan out turn. Oh boy. A reminder to stay with us after the game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Converse. All right. In turn hit. He wants to hit this and roll out now. I believe this is his last shot. Whoa, whoa. But those stones covered up, whoa. Linda, sometimes you lose <laughs> a little track of where you are in this end. That's right. He wants to roll this out. Good shot by Thomas Norgren. He's hitting very well. Another blank on the board, blanked in two and three, and it remains Canada leading 2-0 over Sweden here at the 1989 World Curling Championships in Milwaukee. Here in the sixth round of the World Curling Championships, Scotland with the hammer tied, Denmark 1-1, Italy with the hammer as they trail Norway still 2-0.
USA with the hammer trying to get back into it with France down 3 0. Switzerland ahead of Germany 3 0. And Canada, that's two straight blanks in two and three. Continue to lead 2 0 as we go now to the fourth end. Well, it's the same pattern. Pat Ryan uh, through the first rock uh, asked for Don McKenzie stone into the rings. It sits behind the tee line. You'll see it coming into view now. It sits in the back of the 12 foot at the six, 7 o'clock position. And from that point on, Thomas Nurgan is just controlled on throwing up the corner guard. We saw this the same pattern we saw the last end. And Mr. Ryan has walked up to the front. And once again, we'll try and slip this off. That's the old Pat Ryan style, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, as John Walchuk settles in. But the, the feeling was, and you uh, made mention of it, is that this kind of ice doesn't lend to this kind of game. Well, you don't you don't peel as easily on this kind of ice. We, we saw an example of that uh, earlier. And uh, there's a couple of rocks still in play. Thomas will probably play the corner again and then uh, move down and if he gets close to his third man shot he'll then go to the freeze again. Why not do it now? Well because the, the best method of scoring extra points is to try and get something out in front so that you can get around it. Uh, the perfect freeze is the, I think Linda will agree is probably the toughest shot in curling and especially on this kind of ice where you where you know reading the ice and calling the right ice is very difficult so the perfect freeze you have to have absolutely the perfect weight it has to judge properly and it has to you know, come to rest straight on. Otherwise, you can be squeezed out. I agree. It's really tough today to get those rocks Ooh. in exactly the right position. Anders Luth. All that throws up the corner guard. But if you remember back to Kelowna, uh, Linda, we saw a tremendous action in Kelowna at the Scott Turner Art. Right. And the reason we saw it was because the ice was moving two and a half to three feet both rocks. ways for both turns. And, uh, and we, we, the teams could play the 12 foot, they could get around the center stones. And uh, if you think back to that semifinal that we watched uh, between uh, Michelle Schneider and uh, Heather Houston, which was just absolutely a sensational kind of game. As good as you ever want to watch. Don Walchuk couldn't draw in behind, Rex out in front, and now there's lots of rocks to you. Well, it's interesting because Pat went away from the pattern of splitting and, and decided to go in first. Now, there's a couple of ways of defending against the corner guard. One, of course, is to split them off. The other is to go in first. If you go in first, you better stay in front of that tee line or you're in deep trouble. The other method of defending against the corner guard is to throw up your own center line guard, trying to entice your opposition to go in around to the forefoot area. This gives Sweden a chance, though. That guard is in good position. The yellow rock with the corner guard to come around it. Come here, Nuno! Come here! Thank you, Mr. Here's the hook, though. Come here, there's the hook. Yeah. Sweden's having trouble with the weight. That one was right down the center, and you would think that would be really keen, and he comes up light. Too many rocks to get off, too many rocks out in front, and Pat Ryan's going to go in first. Now, the key here, Linda, is to keep it in front of the tee line. Top of the 12-foot or top of the 8-foot. There's, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I think so many teams worry about getting a rock totally buried in the They even sweep it so that it's back of the house. It's really important in this situation to keep it in the front part of the house. Randy Furby and his first stone. Wait's good. Wait's good. Did you hear Donnie say? Wait. Too deep, Linda. Too deep. Oh. Oh. They're sliding well. You're right. You know, it a lot. Yeah, it's hard to understand how that Swedish rock stopped so quickly, but uh, it seems to be good weight down the middle. Now this, what happened to the stone like that, Vic? You can see what's developed now. All of a sudden, if uh, Sweden can get a stone around this guard in front of that rock, top of the forefoot, and, and their shot rocks, now Mr. Ryan is looking at uh, giving up a deuce. Jan Olof Nassayen trying to get it around. Now it's sliding like crazy here. How did it go? It's almost like it's picking its feet up. Oh, close. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 
ball man teaching in, huh? Uh, well, they didn't really want to move the redstones. They would have liked to have sat uh, buried and anywhere in front of those rocks, but tapping it back gives Pat a chance now to come down to it. Always amazes me how Randy Kirby lines up. We'll take a look at it next time he's in the hack. He lines up with it so different from anybody else. It's against all the, all the instructional books, all the manuals, everything you've ever read or been taught about lining up your stones. He has it almost beside him. I have a good friend that one of the Mike Ratchers, his name, that he curled one year with me when he was lining the stone up. I was we were playing on sheet B. I thought he was throwing on sheet C. <laughs> Actually, Pat and Randy have been working together this year, and they've changed the way he lines up and starts his forward press huh? because he was having trouble with certain shots. So he's actually done this on purpose. A little bit different. Board up, board, keep the inner board. He actually lines it that way on purpose? Yes. I didn't realize that. Park the hot. I want to tell everybody that Scotland and Denmark have blanked the fourth end, so it remains Scotland one, Second Denmark four. one in the fifth end of play, and the hammer belongs to Scotland and Graham Adam from Lockerbie. Jan Olaf Nassayen and his second stone here in the fourth end of play, Canada leading Sweden 2-0. Whoa! Manor! Whoa! Whoa! He moved far enough to lie too. I think he can if he hits it properly. Yes, he can, and there, not quite. He drove it back. And then just to go on, go a step further with your comments, uh, John Allardyce, who's uh, our statistician, was saying that that's right. You're, you're correct, and, and that they actually, the reason they do that, they do that, the reason they're lining up that Randy's lining up that way, he used to pull the rock uh, back too close to him and throw inside out all the time, and so that uh, to compensate for that he's lining up with the rock on the outside so he doesn't pull it in cl so close to his body it's kind of interesting he has quite an exaggerated forward press where he makes sure it's clear of his body and that way he can have a good straight swing mm -hmm. well the forward press i'm i'm 100 percent in favor of i think it's a it's vital to a good curling delivery it's uh, also from a visual point of view from a psychological point of view you press down your line and then it's all there in front of you Skip stones to come here in the fourth end and the first from Pat Ryan. In turn, tap back. Should have enough to move them. Just, just, just enough. Just to move them. Just to move them, he says. Back got it started a bit. It's really curling. Can he hold it up? Two Dons has got a tie. Come on, come on, come on, Randy come on. Furby. Here's a look at it. What do you think, Fitz? I think the... Uh, Canada's line one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on, Then we Linda. come back. Update for you. USA, France, 3 nothing. France leading. Final stone, Jim Vukic, Seattle, third end. He only has an open hit for one. He had a chance to try and split a rock in earlier, missed that chance, and only picked up the one point. And the U.S. on the board, looking to win their first game of these championships against France, down 3-1. I'll say Canada's line one. Red Rock's line one. Absolutely. It actually turned out not too badly. The Red Rock has rolled into a fairly good position. Thomas Norgan uh, has played 6-6 six, six and no draws, and here's his first draw of the game. Fourth end, trailing 2-0 to Pat Ryan in Canada. He's playing down to the back box, I think. Oh, he's lying one now, so uh, Pat's going to have to remove that. Hit it right on the nose. Touch it back.
looking at the angles here. Yeah, I think so. This will be the final stone for Pat Ryan. Sweden does have the hammer here in the fourth end. Okay, he's gonna come down. He's not taking a lot of ice. He's gonna hit this right here like so. Now, the key is where will this rock go? He wants it to shoot over this way here. But the, for Pat, right in there is where he wants to sit. Hit it on the nose. Don't worry about the backstone. Boy, the Ryan Express coming right at you now. Final stone for Pat Ryan. Big wave. Well, he wanted to hit it on the nose. You can see Thomas Norgren taking a look at that shot, Canadian shot stone now. On the other side, wondering, wondering if he can get in there. It is partially covered. We can't see the guards, but they are. there are two yellow in stones in front of the house. And, of course, he's moving out into this frosty ice in sort of like unknown territory at this point. There any chance he can come the other way down the center line and curl in to tap it back? No chance in a million years. I don't think it, would, it wouldn't come that way. It would curl that much, but it wouldn't have enough weight to move it. It would curl it far away. Just the draw. Jan thinks it's there. This is a good look at it from the front. But I, Thomas Snorgren doesn't think it's there. So go ahead. Let's draw. And that's important. If he doesn't feel the shots there, Vic, there's no way in the ha he should get in that hack to throw it. You know, if he scores a single point here, it's two to one. If he misses his shot and gives up a single, it's three nothing. The final stone of this fourth yeah. yeah. end. It's only a second, uh, a second draw of the game now, and it's really moving. Ooh. How far will it slide? Fly too far? It did. It's a steal of one for Canada. Came across, but it slid too far, and Sweden give up the steal. Canada now leading 3 nothing as we come back. It's end action here at the World Curling Championships in Milwaukee. Midway point of the sixth round of the World Curling Championships. Scotland, Denmark still locked in a 1 1 tie. Norway by 1 over Italy, and Igor Ram still has the hammer. USA is on the board, but still trail France 3 1. Switzerland ahead of Germany 3 1. And Canada, Pat Ryan with a steal of 1, now leading Sweden 3 0 as we go to the fifth end. Mikael Youngberg, the Swedish lead. Well, it's uh, the same pattern we've watched uh, now for three ends. That's Don McKenzie Stone sitting at the back of the 12-foot. Pat wanted that in front of the 4-foot. Slipped behind the T-line. And Thomas Norgren has thrown up three corner guards. And they've been split off. If you're right, Ray, that last point, that steal for Canada, is a big one because they go up three. Two, you're looking at it's one miss, perhaps giving the, the team a tie, but now they're right probably feeling board. pretty confident out there. The Swedish skip struggling a bit with his weight. He was heavy on both of those draws. Those were his first two draws, Linda. He's thrown six hits up to that point. Maybe in that one he kicked down, he should have maybe thrown a quiet draw. Hmm. Something you were, we were talking about when we were out the other evening, Ray, is that while some of the rinks are no longer in awe of Canada, what they are a little worried about, a little fearful of, is just the situation when they're playing Pat Ryan, because he does, and he certainly has that worldwide reputation of being a great 
dealer of rocks, and if he gets up and ahead of you, uh, this is the kind of game that you'll see from Pat Ryan. Not only in Europe do they worry about that. They worry about that all across <laughs> our country, too. Huh? I mean, uh, a great example, going back to the Briar again, Dick, was the, the Briar final. Uh, you know, Rick Folk and the Beast Boys in BC played a, a terrific growing game. They just couldn't get anything going. And, you know, when Rick gets it going, he's got as good a touch as there is in the game. They just couldn't get anything going. Pat, Pat got that two-point lead, and, and we're not. I'm not certain would never belittle the fact that it doesn't take a lot of skill to, you know, to run these rock rocks, because it does. It's a, it's a very skillful part of the game. It's a little more difficult to be accurate on ice, where you have to, you know, take more than the edge of the stone. And so, if uh, if Pat can defend this straight through, then that is something that's worth, you know, worth seeing, worth watching. That's entertainment. I think that you'll find, though, in three or four of these ends, that uh, there'll be some nose hits and there'll be some misses. Running off stones on this kind of ice surface is not quite as easy. You know, there seems to be a spot out there or something, Linda, because that, that's twice the stone has come to a dead stop right in that very spot. It could be a spot. Often there's little patches of ice that are softer, and uh, maybe that's happening on some of these sheets. It's so frustrating, though. You feel like you have your draw weight, and all of a sudden the rock just let go, that's stops right. without you thinking it will. Part of the team line, he wants this. Randy Kirby. Update for you, Germany, Switzerland, as they play the fourth. Switzerland leading 3-1, to one, final stone of Patrick Herleman from Lausanne. And this end was set up very nicely. Switzerland was sitting two in a guard partially on shot rock, and Germany racked on the guard, so they had a free draw for three. And Switzerland now in control, 6-1. to one. Switzerland looking to win their third straight, and Germany coming in with a record of 1-1. One one. The Roland Yent rink from Klusen. Well, they're looking just to tap back shot rock and hoping to set something up where there's backing protection behind the yellow stone. Perhaps a little bit too far. But Canada will have to worry about removing the yellow stone and not hitting it on the back rock. Normal. And again, you know, it's, it's a peculiar thing that when you have to think about it that those two stones at the back of the 12 belong to Canada, but if you're Sweden, you don't mind those being there because you can play up to it or hopefully something might jam on it. Or it's something a lot of uh, people don't do, just playing their club yeah. games. They prefer to remove rocks or set up guards. Well, yeah, because, I mean, look at those are all against me, possibly. That's right. You have to have a lot of confidence in your team and your own ability to make the <laughs> final shot because you're leaving those rocks there on purpose, but if you miss, it's just about history in this type of competition. <laughs> that was, please draw up to this rock or just tap it back. Jan Olof Nassayen and his second stone, the Swedish third. Here in the fifth end with Canada leading Sweden, 300. An update, the USA and France as they play the fourth. France leading three to one. And this is the final stone for Dominique Dumont Rock of Major. The US got a few rocks in the house, but all they had to do was make a nose hit on shot rock and they picked up a point. Four to one, France leading Jim Vukic of Seattle. Swedish team had very good weight on this rock. They did oh, put it right in front of the red stone, but the yet. angle isn't as good as they want it. Yeah. And Pat can hit this yeah. and remove it right yeah. from the house. Yeah. 
Lots of weight from Pat Ryan. Take it out of there. Will the raised stone go? No, it will hang around the back of the 12 as well. So now three Canadian stones in play at the back of the 12. He throws that big weight so well. He's so accurate. Well, they do practice this a lot. And his style is just so unique, the way he comes cat-like out of the hat. Because he has a big swing and drives forward very solidly. Puts quite a big handle on it. And of course, that Pat Ryan weight, that big takeout weight. Tony Demandriana. Now, the good thing about this for Sweden is they have three rocks now at the back of the rings, and they're trying to draw their rock right in front of the two that are on the right side of the house. Thomas Norgren hey, and his first stone Go. here in the fifth. Well, it's a good chance then to Go. maybe get uh, you know get a freeze in here. Go. There are two rocks on that side of the sheet, so you can just get some place in front of them and makes it a little more difficult to be removed. Har räcker inte ner eller? Måste ha längre upp det som inte kommer upp. Nej, han har ju lagt i gluggen då, ja. Ja, men det är en halv meter. In any language, it seems he's not too pleased. That almost looked like it was falling back towards center, or at least straightening out. He thought it would curl the whole way and end up sitting on one of the back rocks, and it just stopped curling. Ja, nu kan jag inte hålla riktigt när jag gjorde det. Ja, ja. Ja, det är en kvar. Ja, ja. Well, Thomas Norgren obviously looking for the jam back, and uh, Pat would like to get this out of there. Force Thomas to draw for a single point. This will be the final stone for Pat Ryan here in the fifth. Sweden does have the hammer. They trail 3 0. They do. It'll slide a little too far. Now, is it second or third shot? Well, it's fourth shot, isn't it? I think so. Shot. They just have the draw for one. That's a good shot, Benda. They got it out of there, and those uh, those are not easy. You know, when you've got two rocks behind like that, so, so often you jam them back, and the next thing you know, the, the opposition has that free draw for two. But I think you're right here. It's just all you've got is a open draw to the ring. <laughs> yeah, he's saying that too. Free draw. <laughs> He's taking the same spot as he just took, which is fine, but he is playing out to the side. You have to be careful you don't throw it too hard and try and come on those back rocks and maybe have the wrong line and miss everything. Commando! Yeah. Into the frost again. Oh, they're come trying to hold this up. This may curl too much. This may curl too much. Now, who's shot? They there? Yes, they are. They're there. They were able to hold it up. Boy, was that ever something. Nail-biting time for Sweden as it looked like it just might move too far. Well, that was the trouble with not playing just down the middle for a straight draw. It did curl a lot. So Sweden on the board leading... Get there one point, and Canada leads now three to one after five ends here at the Mecca in Milwaukee. If you missed it this afternoon, Heather Houston from Thunder Bay, the Lakehead Ladies Tournament Club, was a winner over Sweden in a women's game, and so she remains now the only undefeated women's rink in play with three straight wins, and then there are five rinks right behind at two and one. So a great start for Heather Houston and her rink from Thunder Bay, the two-time Canadian national champion. Let's join Ray now and Pat Ryan. Pat Ryan, a nice way to get started. Maybe your thoughts on the ice tonight. It seems to be uh, it's moving a lot, but a little bit more consistent. That's right, Ray. It's, uh, it's consistent with the game that we just played this afternoon, and that's, that's really uh, reassuring for us because we, we played on such a drastic difference of ice in the first and second draw. Uh, we were betting on the ice being the same as the first draw, and that's what it is, so it, it feels good now. That's right, well, and Tommy Stern came up with a pretty hot hand against you earlier on in the afternoon. Well, he was. He was playing well, but, uh, you know, we weren't playing that well. I, you know, he deserved to win the game. Uh, you know, they're, they're a good team, and 
Oh, we, we just got to worry about our own game now, getting a touch of draw weight. I think that'll decide. If we can get draw weight on our side and use it to our advantage, then uh, then things will be all right. Exactly. Just a, a little comment when Thomas Norgren too was going to throw that rock through in the in the second, and he just sort of kicked it. Have you ever seen that before? He didn't get in the hack or throw it. <laughs> no, I guess he says that's what uh, they do in their country. So. Uh, you know, I guess you can walk across red lights in <laughs> other countries. You can kick rocks. That's right. Okay, thanks for joining us, Pat, and good luck in the back half of this game. Thanks. Victor, back upstairs to you. Thanks, Ray, and continued success to Canada's Pat Ryan. Leads right now 3-1 over Sweden. We'll have more from the sixth round of the 1989 World Curling Championships from La Mecca in Milwaukee in just a minute. He's starting to get a feel for draw weight, and that's... It's very evident in this we game, you know, a couple really times he chose to, you know, just play those quiet come arounds and, and he's got good control of this game right now. And he is tough when he is ahead. We you know it. It's at the World Championships last like year in Lausanne. We're, we're, we're way up, but I'm saying, but they, they should be the same. Like the game. De är ganska korta på att skaffa. Ja. <laughs> Looking for the center line guard. It's going to curl a little too much. Paddle around yeah. off. He's got control of this game. Don McKenzie. Have you seen that before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rick Folk saw a lot of that. That was, you know, it was peculiar because remember in uh, Saskatoon, the game he played in the round robin, they blanked six straight ends. And that was one away from the, the Briar tying the Briar record of uh, seven straight blanked ends. And then, of course, they went into the championship, the final, and saw a lot of zeros on the board as well. You won't see half as many blank ends in, uh, in the curling games and with surfaces like this, the deck, as we saw in the harder surfaces like, like we had at the bar. But if you keep your weight up and uh, hit the broom, then you can peel rocks. Oh, I guess they're pretty close. They're not that bad. Miguel Youngberg puts up another center line card. Don McKenzie settles in the Canadian lead for his second stone here in the sixth end with Canada leading Sweden 3-1. Right. Here's the nose hit that Thomas Norgren needed. And a not too happy Don McKenzie. Call from the Swede. Anders, tell I hit you. You're not going to be able to hit me. Short's okay. Swim behind this stone, but a little bit short. That's all right as well. Anders Liff, who says that uh, has a great interest in trotting horses. That's something. Harness horse racing is very big in Scandinavia. And Man in Sweden and Norway, Denmark, Finland, Finland as well, yeah. the Scandinavian countries, very big, harness racing. Pat will play the top one, trying to get them all. Mr. Walchuk. John Walchuk. From the angle and the multi spill, one, two, three, there they are. Nice shot, John Walchuk. That's the way it's done. Yeah. A lot of people don't line up those double kills. They look at the rock closest to center line and try and remove it, but those are not that hard. Little smile from Don. Good call by Pat. There's the one, the two, and the three. They're all moving.
Coach turned front stone. There's nothing in play. Nothing in front. Nothing in the ring. Anders Lerf. Centerline guard. Updates for you. Let's start with Germany, Switzerland, with Switzerland leading 6-1 to one in the fifth final stone by Roland Jens from Fürsten. And Germany's just having a terrible time here. They got something going. They had a chance for two. Roland came through the court with his last rock, and it rolled too far. Germany gets one. It's now 6-2 to two after five. And the split. Once again, our viewers across the country should keep in mind that four teams will qualify for the semifinals, not three as was the case at the Canadian Championships to Briar. Four teams. So there's lots of room. And tomorrow, of course, Linda will make our prediction, will we not? Oh, will we? <laughs> yes, we, will. we always do that on Tuesday, don't we, Dick? Mm -hmm. All right. Tuesday's prediction day. I'll say something. I'll say something. This is curled off the center line. Pat's liable to ignore it. No, he, he thought about it. He's thinking about it. Just, yeah. Yeah. Let's go, yeah. let's go, <laughs> let's go. Of course, some teams do that. They're trying to put up a center guard for a few, and then they feel if they can just move the rock over a bit, maybe the other team will go into the house, and maybe they'll start to get something going themselves. But I, there's not a curler alive that I... That I you know that doesn't like to do the gambling on the edges as opposed to the center line and, and you're down to your third man Randy Furby Stone and quite needed eh good chance to maybe duck one in here you bury one we saw this afternoon that Tracy Kennedy just absolutely uh, sink one behind a corner guard there. in the seventh end of that game had a huge game and that was the, the rock Linda that set up that three point Sits yeah. back of the tee line and sits back yeah, 12. No fools. I gotta get on the face here yet. That place uh, in oh. the ice is very keen. That's where Sweden was and heavy a couple of times on the other end. So <laughs> the rock really slides. And it's not a good shot. You know, we want uh, Randy wanted that zone to be in the top of the eight foot, not the back of the 12 foot. And as you suggested, now there's some rocks in play, but the four foot is open. The whole side and of the tee is open. Pat will take a few chances over here. Stick a clock on the next one down there, and then didn't see what it, it changed at all. It's really going You've fast. become our official timer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have that nice little watch. Update for you, the game between USA and France as they play the fifth France leading 4-1 final stone for Jim Vukic of Seattle. And the United States is having trouble this end. They're just trying to draw in, trying to draw in, and it comes up short. Oh boy, it's a big four steal for France. They now lead eight to one as they go to the sixth. Jim Vukic won six games, I believe, in Vancouver. They had a very good uh, world at the uh, BC Place, remember? I'm pretty sure it was six, but I'll get uh, John Allardyce, our statistician, to check that for me. Oh, boy. The nice thing about this situation is that, you know, there's a lot of you know, maneuvering going on, but it's all being done, as I mentioned earlier, on the side of the sheet, the four foot so forth, there's nothing that you have to worry about in front. The only one out there is a corner guard, so it's a good chance for Pat to... Canada's loving this, and of course with their shots, they didn't mind coming down and tapping out the Swedish stones. I think Sweden's looking for the shot of the perfect freeze right here. Of course, this is a tough one. Got to get the right line, just sit in front of the red stone. And for you purists across the country, Jim Zukic only won five games. Oh. Thomas Dorgren at his first stone. The 
good shot, Linda. It still can be moved. Just tap back, though. He just back and just touch this back. Lots of room there. You can lie too off of this. I'm not sure if I clicked my watch correctly, but I got 25 seconds on that draw. And down that spot. Well, you mentioned that, that it looked quicker, and it, and it did. But it was a lot of rocks sliding down oh, there. 14 and a half seconds. Fast on there. Now what are they saying? 14 and a half. They for? they uh, they timed the zone from hog line to hog line. Okay. So we've been timing them from. Because I thought then that hog line very good-looking watch of yours, <laughs> Mickey, may have died. Or <laughs> this is my beautiful Swiss watch. It would never oh. lie. I don't have the big nose with the Pinocchio look. I, I'm telling the truth. Whoa! Whoa. A lot of weight. A lot of weight, he says. Good. Good line, they say. I'm trying to tap this so we can sit two. That's a good looking shot again. Oh, right an there. excellent shot by Pat Ryan. And he's lying too. You know that he played that back, that was tapped back, it was just uh, back 12 foot away, just through the rings. And to make that shot, he took about three feet of ice, two and a half feet of ice. So that's how much it's swinging. And that's, that's going to put us in, in a good position for a lot of entertaining games the rest of this week if the ice stays like this, Linda. Well, but Sweden is looking at this, trying to decide if it's the point in the game where they should be gambling. There is a possibility of a double takeout. Or he could try and just come down and tap that rock back that's sitting in the four-foot area just next to the button. Just tell us straight that, please. Easy countable blue walk. Pass. Mean. Hack fault. Oh. I think we'll tell us straight that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Show us, Ray. <laughs> oh, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> okay, as Linda suggests, he has the opportunity to be hitting this one here and trying to make the double here, moving this stone, but he decided, I think, to come down and try and freeze it on the face of that or just push it back slightly. And it was a very good telescreen. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 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 Lots yes! of movement. They've, they've Looks jumped like on it. a lot it. of weight. Yes! Yeah. Whoa. Yes! Whoa! Whoa! Thomas Dorgren. Good roll. Too roll too far? No, it's oh, a good roll. There. It's a Nicely roll. in behind the guard and he is now shot stone. Yeah. Now, Pat Ryan, how do you get that out of there? Oh, we got backing though. Just on ours for one. Yeah, that's the best Thomas could do, Linda. That, that was a great shot. It was a very good shot. Got the perfect roll. Pat just has to draw to the yeah. forefoot now. Just. But you heard Don Walsh, I'll tell you to Don McKenzie, that uh, if it does come to the, the back red one, he will be shot. In other words, if he comes down to the face of his own stone, he will be shot. Here's a good look at it from the top, Linda. Yeah, no question the yellow stone is lying to Sweden. is shot stone at 9 o'clock. But they feel if they do come to the face of their own, they'll be shot rock. And I think they're right. Yeah. Final stone, 6 in. Canada leading 3-1, and Pat Ryan trying to draw in for his one. Moving an awful lot. The two Dons, Walchuk, McKenzie trying to hold it up. Will they be able to? No, it's going to wreck out in front. Now, can they get it in? No, it won't spill in that far. It's a steal of one for Sweden here in the six. Boy, that ice is moving. But it's very entertaining stuff here in the sixth round of the World Curling Championships in Milwaukee. We'll have more from the Mecca in just a minute. Now here at the World Curling Championships, Scotland, Denmark with the hammer in a 2-2 tie. Italy trying to get back into their game with Igor Rams. They'll have the hammer, but they trail by five. The USA, France. Boy, look at that. 8-1 over Seattle, Jim Bukic. 
Switzerland leading by four over Germany. And in our game, Sweden with the steal of one in the sixth. Now within one, Canada leading 3-2 as we go to the seventh end. Right. And the Canadian lead, Don McKenzie. Thomas Dahlgren in his first world championships came into this sixth round with a record of one and one. And after looking like he may go down to defeat here, he stalled his way back to be to within one. And this is the Swedish second, Anders Lue. Well, Pat Ryan had perfect weight in that last shot, Dick. It just, it, uh, just moved over quickly on him. Uh, and he didn't anticipate that. He actually had four foot weights and he made a big move and just picked the front rock. Uh, you have to give credit to yeah, Thomas yeah, Snorgren for making a super hit and roll because it looked uh, <laughs> like he was going to give up a deuce. He, he just played the perfect shot. He got the hit and a little roll in behind the corner guard, forcing Pat to draw, and then we saw what happened. Pat ran off uh, two corner guards, and now he's decided to go in behind this one. Canada's had a little bit of trouble getting the rocks in front of the tee line, and that's been a problem with uh, the last few ends when they're trying to get something going. We'll see if they can get the rocks positioned just where they want them. Good point, and it's going to be too deep again, I think. It allows Sweden to come down and sit on top of it. They had to brush that when they get it by the guard. It may have almost been better just to kick that. You would have ended up with two corner guards. We're taking a lot of ice in this spot. God, come in. And of course, the farther they move out on the sheet, taking ice in the eight foot, the slower it gets, and this one will come up short. It's a tempting situation, isn't it, Linda? Let's go around, Pat says. Edge of the 12 foot. John Walchuk, last stone. In turn draw. Yeah. Canada line one. Back of the eight foot at seven o'clock. Come on. And of course, the same problem. Well, We're you. moving even further out, and they're I finding it quite frosty. Digs in and now three stones in front of the house. Playing the raise. Jan Olof Nasaya. Sweet is third in his first stone here in the seventh Whoa. end. Canada leading 3 2. No, no, no. Not curling quite enough. This didn't come enough. It's close to the weight limit. Well, of course, it does expose the rock that's in the house by uh, kicking it over and rolling over itself. Well, we know it's heavier on the outside. Put in this. Well, the outturn draw this time, and then if he gets it, now, you made an excellent point when you suggested or you mentioned earlier that the, the problem was the, the fact that Canada, 
Shane Team were getting their rocks in behind the tee line, and that's been causing them a problem. Here's a chance with an outturn draw to get around those front stones, get it to the top of the eight foot, and once again, you'll put yourself in a position, a good position to score a couple of points. The only danger with the situation that we're looking at right now, and there's one of the big changes is that the four foot is recovered. I mean, last end we had all the play, you know, covering the eight foot, but now it's four foot is covered. So if you don't make this shot, you can once well, again it's too deep. Timer's going to slide oh, oh. a little bit. You just you take that stone bit and you move it to four feet forward and put it at the top of the four foot. All of a sudden, this end is yours. Randy knows it as well as anybody. Just, just, and there's a good look at the amount of ice, four feet of ice. Of course, the weight is more difficult out here. See if Sweden can put it into the position we were talking about, right behind the garden in front of the tee line. Uh, oh. next, second stone for the Swedish third here in the seventh. Well, go, go! Make it out in the frost line and just ran straight down there. We've seen that a couple of times. Come here, come here, everybody! Digs yep. in and stops. It doesn't get there. An update for you. The game between Germany and Switzerland. Six end action. Switzerland leading. And this last stone by Patrick Erleman. Switzerland really just needed to no tip the one rock in the forefoot to get one shot. He makes it look spectacular. He makes a double kill, but still only gets the one point. Well, it leaves Switzerland in control. They lead 7-2 over Germany as they play the seventh. This is a must. Get it right into this area, right into there. And close this end off. You could score three points. Randy Furby will try and do that with his second stone. This is a must shot, Dick. You've got to make this one. Lots of room. Just for weight now. Starting to slide again. They had the brushes they felt to get it by, and it just went a little too deep. You move that rock two feet forward, and boy, I tell you, you've got an end set up for yourself. Sits on the button. Yeah. Well, we were just sweeping it the line. Huh? We were just sweeping it the line. Oh, I know. Oh, no, I know you want to sweep it the way. It's cut, and I it was one of the And it did have the same path as the first one. It just got this other, and then things from hard on this. Yeah. You never know. It was up by the guy by that bunch. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> they were a little bit worried. Pat was a little bit worried about it getting by the guard, but uh, it did get by by quite a bit. We'll see if Sweden can find the same path. Skip Stones here in the seventh, the first from Thomas Norgren of Sweden. And he's made some big shots in this game because he's been in trouble a lot of ends, Linda. If he can glue this one in here, he puts himself in a position to maybe steal another point. Play the tick, play the tick. What are you saying? Trying to hold up, going to get the little rub. There's the tick. And into the top of the 12. Update for you, the game between Norway and Italy, with Norway leading 6-1 to one final stone of Andre Pavani from Cortina d'Ampezzo. Just an open shot. Norway's got good control of this game. So Italy picks up one more. They still trail, though, 6-2 to two as they play the eight. Where, on the south side one? Well, we don't have to tell us straight this one, Dick, because uh, we've already done it. If you get this rock uh, top of the 12-foot, half behind that center line guard, uh, just block up any draw, take away the draw from Sweden, and you're in a position to score three, maybe four, even four points. Sweden is having a very difficult time finding the path to the forefoot. It looks like Canada's finding it. They're just maybe a little bit heavy, but Sweden keeps having their rocks hang. Pat Ryan and his first stone. Got to hit the broom in these conditions. Wait there, you heard him say. Staying out a bit. This one stayed out. He caught the same, caught the same line that Thomas uh, Norgren did. 
Okay. It's just absolutely perfect weight. It just didn't curl. You just got on the edge of the frost line and it wouldn't come. And that's what happened to the three stone. That's two shots. So, you know, Pat threw a very good shot in the last end. He was draw for one and, and he threw absolutely perfect weight and it, it cut too much on him and made the big move. In this case, uh, you just move, take the stone and move it over about a foot and a half thick and uh, you've got an end, I'll tell you. And Randy got lots of movement there, Linda. His rock moved a long way. I don't think I know what's happening, and I don't think Sweden knows what's happening because they're a, a little reluctant to try and play the draw. If you can come down anywhere in the four-foot area, you would see just giving Canada one stop because Pat Ryan would have trouble getting it out. He's moving the broom into the eight-foot now. Now they had the broom for the last shot closer to the edge of the 12 foot, about an inch or two inside. They've taken about three or four more inches of ice here. Less ice, I should say. This is the final stone for Sweden and Thomas Norgren here in the seventh. Canada's yeah. have the hammer. They lead 3-2. Right it went right away. Right yeah. out of his hand it went. Oh, maybe they got to play something else here? No. Oh. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. It cut right out of his hand, so he either turned it over, and he wasn't anywhere near the, the straight line, the frost line. Canada's line four. With an open draw. There's nothing open about this draw, by the way. You have to go way, way out to get it in, but he could actually score five here. Norgren, Thomas Norgren saying to Anders Luft, hey, nothing you there. could do about that one. That. He's not going to move there? No? It, it, it's kind of strange because Randy played a couple shots down there and they both yeah. worked across it's and they looked like they ran well. And Thomas Norgren threw a couple of shots down and they both held and we saw Pat's last one hold down that cross line. So you know, obviously it's a little trickier than we, you know, gave it credit to being. In turn draw for five. Final stone. Canada with a chance for five. He's way, he's way out. Gonna get it by. Oh, oh Rob. Just had the perfect weight. Good weight. Weight was good. Had nice weight. Uh, Walt took this good shot, but <laughs> it just couldn't get it by the guard. Put four on the board for Canada here in the seventh. And now it's a commanding five-point lead for the Ryan Express. Seven to two, and Ryan looks like he may win his first, but there's still three ends to go. <laughs> In another corner. Well, Sweden must be quite frustrated with that last in. They thought they yeah. had some good shots coming down, and their rocks hung, and uh, Canada's rocks came right in. And then, of course, with Sweden's last rock, it just took off. Is that action or not, Linda? Wasn't going to help, though. That red uh, marking on the stone uh, is from the sideboards, the paint from the sideboards. Uh, all the teams have been commenting on We've played in situations where the paint has gotten on the hitting surface, and of course, uh, it's really critical. Actually, when we were in the Scott Center in Hearts in Charlottetown, it was really bad because the paint was also flaking onto the ice. And when hit rocks hit, they didn't bounce off properly. They sort of almost stuck to each other before they separated. You don't get the same action. You don't. It doesn't seem to be as big a problem here, but uh, something you have to be aware of. It doesn't happen very often in clubs because the boards aren't freshly painted, but for these competitions, they put in the new boards every time. Oh, and so sweet a second, Anders Lurk.
And the corner guard, Thomas Morgan, trying to get something up in front so he can hopefully get something in behind it. Score a couple of points, get himself back in the game. We got time, little bird sheet. Hang on, he's throwing it right now. Last time we see this team together, as we've mentioned many times, uh, Pat Ryan now living in Kelowna. Oh, I don't, yeah. Like he I that bad. certainly I think so. And it, he <laughs> certainly gave the indication uh, that he won't, uh, he won't play next year. He's going to take some time off, spend some time with his family. I think they're looking to play together in some bond fields, which would be nice to try and enjoy the year after two very successful seasons. Sure there's some people in Kelowna that would be disappointed to hear that he's not wanting to compete. No, I'm not. Thomas Holly tried the other side, so he's pulling up the corner on the other side of the sheet this time. You can tell Randy line up, and that's what we talked about earlier. Oh, it's very different to see someone line up that way, but he does it intentionally to get away from taking the stone in too close to his body. Jan Olof Nasea. Not out in front this time, slips it into the top of the eighth. Ray mentioned earlier that Canada's next game is Norway, which of course should be a great game, and I think this kind of game tonight will really prepare them. I think they've got their draw weight pretty well. They've had a few that are a bit around. deep, um, but they seem to be catching onto the ice a bit better tonight. And it looks a little bit like Igor Ramso uh, got his game back in. <laughs> back on track. Doesn't matter if Pat sticks around here. Pat Ryan and his first stone, the Canadian skip here in the eighth with Canada leading 7-2 over Sweden. What a roll. And the shooter rolls out of play as well. That last end, though, you know, when it's Pat scores his four, it's one of those things that you're saying, you know, he, he kept putting one in, and then Sweden, of course, couldn't get one in to match him, and he puts another one in, and suddenly four points, and Norgren couldn't make a shot. That's true, because Canada wasn't placing them in really the perfect position. They were a little bit deep, but Sweden just couldn't find that path. Great. Something I've been asked a few times, uh, once you've played on arena ice, you realize that it is different than most club ice conditions. And someone asked me once how you can prepare for playing on this kind of arena ice, because you don't often face that at all during the season. Uh, so how would you respond to somebody asking something like that? Well, that's, it's a good question. It's a tough one to even answer, because it's hard, hard to, to get that surface, you know, the sliding surface. But, you know, I, I think that one of the things you have to do for sure is work work hard on, on a lot more wider shots than you would normally. I think that, that the tendency for all of us in our club games and in, and in a lot of bond skills is that the game has been played so much with an eight foot to eight foot. So I think that you get a little better perspective of what you may be facing in arenas when you go to the, you know, when you go to the edge of the 12 foot and go a little bit further because you get a little bit of different, uh, even in the clubs you get some different surface. Pat Ryan 
second film. But what's the difference in the ice? I mean, what's the great difference? Well, you don't get the frost build up in the arenas like this, Vic. It's, uh, we can play, you know, the sheets are it looks like uh, it's colder, the temperatures are cooler, and here you get a, a humidity and a, and a moisture and a frost build up. Something that I like to tell them, too, is I think yeah, you have like to move around and play in a lot of different clubs yeah. because I think if you stay at your home club or just a few in your area, you don't see much variety at all. You see either straight ice or swingy ice, and I think to get some experience on a variety of ice would help as well. well I think that's imperative to, to the development of your game uh, is to play in, in various clubs and uh, various areas because you do get the different conditions. You know, you, you get the, in the prairies, you get the dry, cold, and, you know, you go east, you get a lot more moisture in the air, okay, and the ice will move a little more for you. Final stone of this eighth end for Sweden, trailing 7-2 and drawing for one. And the handshakes all around as Thomas Norgren says thank you very much. He'll take his one point, and Pat Ryan wins his first game at these World Championships here in Milwaukee by a final score of 7-3 over Sweden. So the Ryan Express is on the board and yes a deep sigh of relief for pat ryan here in milwaukee the draw weight is our friend and it's what's going to win us the the whole thing if we don't get draw weight we'll be out early and, and you have to use it to your advantage and so we, we had to work with it and i think thinking that way we were able to get the feel of draw weight and use it a little bit more uh, and as you can see, we had draw weight tonight, and, and uh, because of that, we had a lot better game all the way around. You know, that six ends, for example, when you had Thomas Norgren got the perfect hit and roll in behind that uh, corner guard. Looked like he might set up a deuce there. And then he got the great hit and roll. You threw the perfect weight in that shot, Pat, but it made a big move on you. So that was a, a particular spot in the ice where the more ice you take, the more it curls. I could have taken three feet less, and the rock would have sat on a pipeline, and it wouldn't have curled at all. But I thought that because he was tucked in behind, if I take more ice, my rock will be angling across as it, as it came across the uh, hog line, and then I would have his, him for backing, maybe tap him out and get a deuce, but it moved more than I expected. Yeah, it made a, it made a big move. The frost line, let's talk a little bit just for a moment about the frost line, like how it builds up. Sometimes when you get out on it, as was the case with the outturns going the other way, where you end, eventually got the three-ender, mm -hmm. a couple of Thomas's stones and one of yours, I believe, sat right on that line and never moved at all. Well, I don't know. I don't really think that was a frost, though, uh, Ray. I think it was. it's just a, a, a particular line in the ice where... If you're inside it, the rock walks over, and if you're outside it, it just sits. And the further out you get, there's, there's always a point, just in the middle, just the outside of the edge mm -hmm. of the 8-foot, where if you get wide, it just sits there. And like they, there. they got burned earlier in the end, and that's why we had a couple of rocks in there, because they took too much ice. Yeah, well, Lynn and I were saying, too, in, in thinking about that end, I mean, Randy's, a couple of Randy's rocks ran perfectly down. I mean, one went too deep, and one stopped on the button, but they ran perfectly. And then Thomas' uh, stones didn't come at all, and one of yours sat out there. Did he turn, uh, let's go to his last shot, did he turn that one over, did he get it started right away? Because he took about six to eight inches uh, less ice than he did mm -hmm. on his first one. Well, that was the line, that was the line where it started to curl. He, he, he started it as well, so, you know, with that and being inside that line, it was, a, it was a guaranteed goner from our perspective. But it's just that line again. You have to throw him straight. Randy threw two really good rocks in there. He was right along the line and then it just came off just the came line. came at the end. It right? was a real hard spot to get in as it turned out. Good. Well, Pat, you're back on track for sure. Good game. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Ray. Dick, this is the Pat Ryan we know. He's He's got it going now. You betcha. And he's got a tough one coming up against Igor Ransfell of Norway. We want to turn our attention now to the game between Scotland and Denmark. And look at that. It's tied 2-2 and blanks in 7, 8, and 9. And they're now playing the 10th end. And Scotland does have the hammer. This rink, uh, Scottish rink, skipped by Graham Adam from Lockerbie in Scotland going against Denmark and Tommy Stern, both rinks coming in with records of two and zero. Three rinks entered this sixth round with perfect records of two straight wins, Scotland, Denmark, and Switzerland. It's becoming more and more common to see Scottish teams at whichever level, whether junior or this level, playing a very open game and blanking a lot of ends, and I guess we're seeing it again tonight. Uh, Denmark does have last rock, but there is one rock in front of the house, so Scotland's trying to get something going. This will be our first look at Scotland. If 
playing the intern draw, and it does curl a lot here. They did put one in, and Denmark managed to chip it out. One center line guard. Top of the four foot. Denmark making good contact with those and rolling away. The Scottish third, Kenneth Horton. 32-year-old chartered accountant. And his first stone. Scotland with the hammer here in this 10th end of a 2-2 tie with Denmark. Robin Copland, or Copeland, is their lead, and Andrew McQuiston. His shot is second, and he wrecks on that front guard. That's one of those that you hate to see because not only did he wreck on it, but he's moving head. quite far, and now the forefoot is open. <laughs> Even if he hadn't been fully in the house, if he hadn't kicked that one away, if he sat in front of the house, he still would have something going near the center. Hey. This is Pear Bird, the yeah. Danish third and I may have said Scotland has the hammer excuse me Denmark has the hammer in this 10th end I think I did mention that that's okay then. sorry it wasn't Linda I had a terrific talk with Pat right after you know, our interview and uh, just to clarify for us uh, uh, the run that he was talking about and he really feels that there is, there is some frost out there but he feels that it's as opposed to being a frost line it's actually a pipeline it's, uh, and, and he contributes that his feeling is, is that as you know they shave the ice at the end of uh, every game and uh, he feels that it's about from the edge of the eight foot in there's a line right there and uh, if you get inside it it really moves across but if you don't it'll just sit right on top of it and he feels that as, as a you know as much as the frost may slow the stone up a little bit it's that line that uh, is caused by maybe the, the the cutting or the shaving of the ice that uh, is is causing that little run and making it a little bit inconsistent but he feels great about the ice now you heard him say in the interview that he feels terrific about his draw weight and uh you know i think also he would like very much to show everybody that uh, he just can't uh, run everything off uh, as, as he does but uh, he's as good as there is at playing the other game as well kenneth horton the third for scotland left his draw short this is the second stone for the danish third pair bird and they're doing a good job now clearing the four-foot area. There is the one corner guard up that Scotland could use, but their rock would only be in the eight-foot. One thing that uh, Ray was mentioning is this pipeline, and I think a lot of people don't know what that is. Uh, of course, to lay down ice on a cement surface, you have to put down pipes, and that causes the ice to freeze. And so quite often That'll people be find it because the pipes run up and down the sheet. There are spots that are uh, created because of those pipes. And of course, with the shaving as well, they do shave in a certain pattern. They scrape the ice up and down and up and down, but sometimes at the edge of the blade that they use to scrape the ice, there will be a run created. This will be the first stone for the Scottish ship. This is Rayan, Graham Adam, his rink from Lockerbie. Interesting story about Graham Adam. He's a medical doctor, and he was one of the first attending physicians at the crash of that Pan Am jet. They're having problems as well trying to find the right draw weight. 
they were looking to put that rock in front of the house. They're hoping for a nose hit on this rock, and then they'll come around it with their last rock. Why wait for the last one? Why not go now? Well, the only rock that was available to them was a rock only protecting the eight foot, and they're hoping that they can get this guard in position so that they can come around to the four foot area and really put the pressure on Denmark. Tommy Sturr, Dana Skip, and his first stone, looking to remain undefeated here in Milwaukee. That's what Scotland was hoping for. Unfortunately, Skip don't get the chance to peel as much, and he really threw that hard, and it ran right down center line. Do I detect a little uh, excuse for Skips up there mm -hmm. on those uh, that tone of yours, Linda Moore? Oh, not at all. That's too bad Tommy Stern has been playing so well. He played so well uh, earlier today against Canada. And he's got control here, but now it's a good chance for Graham Adam to get in behind this center guard. to make sure that stone is nice and clean. Graham Adam has some world championship experience. He was part of the 83 team in Regina. And at that time, he beat Tommy Stern 10 to 4. This one a little closer. there's lots of room it really does have to come over to get behind protection it has the perfect weight to just uh, it doesn't be curling very much under too deep Draw to the back of the four just off the center line then this is what curling's all about isn't it this is what they pay to skip the big bucks for, as Diane Adams said earlier. Now, these are the shots that you could make. It's the peels that you had trouble with, isn't it? Well, I didn't say myself, uh. <laughs> necessarily, but I was just thinking that the skips don't play it as much, and uh, the Dana skip really did throw a lot of weight on that peel, and sometimes you just overdo it a bit. But now the trick with this one is not trying to throw to backing. He's taking ice for the draw. He's got to throw just a draw. Good point, Linda. He needs just a half, a half of the forefoot. Just. <laughs> this, and this stone belongs to the brushers, you know, when it leaves Tommy's hand, as long as he's got enough room to get by that guard, it's the judgment of this stone. We've seen so many cases of overbrushing or underbrushing, just poor judgment. The final stone of this 10th hand. Got a lot to wait. I think actually he's playing to tap it, because he looks like he has thrown a lot of weight. Got a lot of weight on it. He's playing a tap back for sure. Now they're on it. Can they get it by the guard? It'll wreck in front. And Scotland will steal a win here. Final score of three to two. And Scotland remains undefeated at three and zero. Denmark is now two and one. The strategy works for the rink from Lockerbie. Underneath all three by five, and the rink from HF does have the hammers. They play the ninth. Switzerland leading by five over Germany, and the rink from Houston has the hammer there. And Canada, Pat Ryan, a winner, seven to three over Sweden. Ray is standing by with the Scottish skip, Graham Adams. Graham, congratulations, a nice win. You have to win a game like that on a round robin like this. It's a, you know, it's a steal, but it's a nice one to win. It certainly was, yes. In fact, that was the first toss we'd won, and we should really have got away a bit better than that, but failed to cope in the middle of the game. Well, you're three and no now, so you must feel good about your position in the round robin. Certainly do. We have an early start tomorrow morning, mind you. I think we're on at eight tomorrow. You don't like those morning draws, Graham? We haven't had one so far. We'll wait and see whether we like it or not. 
we didn't get a chance to watch all that game. It must have been a well curl game. It was a low, low scoring game. You found the ice you're liking tonight? It was a lot keener. It's, it's a bit keener than I'm used to, in fact. I couldn't hold them back. The, the last draw there was about the slowest one I'd thrown. Tommy uh, looks like he maybe had a little indecision in his last shot. We just talked about it, you and I, a moment ago. Uh, it looked to us like he was first going to draw, and then when he let it go, I, uh, Linda commented on the fact that it looked like he had enough weight to tap it back. Do you think he was kind of playing those two-on-one shots? I think he might have been. He certainly played a good weight, and he certainly, I think he played inside his broom. But uh, I still think he may have picked up something just at the end to come over and wreck in the guard, because they weren't sweeping it most of the way. That's right. They didn't uh, jump on it right away. And uh, then it made the big move, and by that time it was too late. Congratulations, uh, Graham, and good luck tomorrow. Thanks very much. Victor, Scotland the Braves, they're back again, three and no. They are. Congratulations to Graham Adam and his ring from Lockerbie as they now remain undefeated at three and zero. We want to join the game between the USA and France, with France leading ten to five as they play the ninth, and this U.S. rink of Jim Vukic from Seattle trying to battle back. France with the hammer, and uh, right now, the U.S. flying two. They've been playing a kind of end where U.S. is trying to claw back here, and uh, Jim Vukic just made a great hit and roll. That's the rock at the back of the house in the eight foot. And so all France has now is a draw. They'll have to be full eight foot, close to the four foot. This is the French skip. Dominique Dupont Rock, they curl out of the Mejev Curling Club. Last time we saw him was 1986 at the World Championships in Toronto. Very unusual release with his rock. He turned it one way and then back for the other turn at the very end. Everybody trying to help out. Now the third, Christian Dupont Rock, comes out as well. And he's going to come up short, so put two on the board for the USA. And now, Jim Vukic is, is, within, is within three as they'll go to the 10th end. Interesting in this game, Linda, is that uh, the U.S. team is uh, down to nine minutes and 50 seconds, where the, uh, uh, the French team is at 18.48. Quite a discrepancy. A big difference. I know the United States have been down most of the game, and I think they've been trying to play a lot of draw shots and uh, maybe taking some time thinking through the strategy. Well, it'll be interesting as we get down near the end of this. So they got to get uh, this end in in less than 10 minutes. The U.S. lead is James Pleasant. This rink of Jim Vukic curls out of the Seattle Granite Curling Club in Seattle, Washington. Now the United States doesn't have last rock and needs to steal three, so they're looking to put a few guards up, but uh, this is a situation where you can't keep putting them up forever. What? Switzerland has beaten Germany eight to four, so Patrick Hurleman from Lausanne remains undefeated as well at three and zero. Second stone for James Pleasant. The U.S. lead. The new member of this rink only change from their 86 is the lead. This is Patrick Philippe. This is his first world championship. The others were all in Toronto. Make the hit and sit to the top of the four. It's a 
get a steal going, you really need to have some nose hits early. And uh, France has done a good job. They played off the guards that was up front, and now they've removed the rock in the house. But U.S. is going to need a bit of a miracle here. Well, maybe Bard Nordland will be the miracle worker for the U.S. to play the weight this one has definitely teal weight on it daniel cosetto the french second well, that, he's a ski teacher in asia wonder when he finds the time to to curl i think they're both very nice things to do beautiful part of the world All right. are you a skier Vic? yeah Linda, you ski as well? No, I don't. And when we went to Grindelwald this year, my no. entire team went on, skiing, and I ended up playing in a bond seal by Whoop. myself. <laughs> I'm pretty nimble on the slopes myself. Mind you, when I was growing up, and I was very competitive at a, at a junior age for curling, I wasn't allowed to ski. If I was going to ski, I was going to give up the chance to play on the teams I played on because it was felt it was dangerous. And you would put your team at a disadvantage if you couldn't play. Many sports feel that. You know, hockey teams have written into contracts. If you don't do anything else, it might endanger your, your legs, your knees. Of course, the one teammate that decided to play a little trick and go skiing over Christmas holidays one year broke her arm. Oh. Didn't exactly hide the fact that she'd been skiing. Daniel Cosetto peels off the guard. The U.S. third is a 30-year-old Curtis Fish. I have seen this U.S. team a few times because they live just south of where I live. I, I'm from Vancouver and they're from Seattle and they often come up to play in Bondsfield in the Vancouver area. It's funny, I've never curled in Seattle. I live so close and I've played in so many parts of the world but I've never played at the Granite in Seattle. Just so that I can throw this in sometime during the week, I will be curling in Australia this summer as yeah. well. <laughs> Add another country to All my right. list. Look out down under. Here she comes. We decided to bring back Aussie rules curling when we return. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrific game, Aussie rules football. I had a chance to uh, see that in Toronto last fall. <laughs> The younger brother of the skip, this is Christian Dupont Rock. The U.S. has a few rocks in play, but uh, both of them are wide open. The player slipped a bit when he let it go, but I think he's got something here. Uh, I think he, uh, he may have been distracted during his delivery by somebody in the crowd. seem to be the indication. He certainly seems to be upset about something. He turned, uh, you're right, Vicky, he kind of spun around quickly and looked uh, in behind him. I don't know what he was indicating, but... Curtis Fish and his second stone.
kind of shots that will uh, help create a miracle? Well, unfortunately, these are both open. They really needed to guard up early to have a chance. Steals of three are possible. But you need in the lead in second position to have some rocks in front. That delivery looked a little smoother. Christiane Dupont, Rock. Well, they did ally very well. Mm -hmm. They brushed that one and made contact. My French is a little better than my Swedish, actually. Jim Vukic. Looks like Jim's going to put it back in the same spot, or not quite over quite as far. Kind of interesting. I guess you could draw to the back one, hoping you would miss the wide open one, and you could at least get line three. <laughs> well, he as, needs all three. Yeah, but as you mentioned, uh, Linda, it's, it's, he needs a miracle. What is what he needs? <laughs> Scots have all gathered down here by the press bench. They're pretty delighted with the situation. With Scotland on top at three and zero, along with Switzerland. Dominique Dupont Roth, the skip from this Mejev rink from representing France. And his first stone could end it all right here. And he does. Handshakes, and France will win their first at this World Championships in Milwaukee by a final score of 10 to 7. Congratulations to the rink from Mejev. 10-7 winners, more from the Mecca when we come back. France gets by the U.S. Switzerland remains undefeated, beating Germany. And Canada, Pat Ryan wins his first 7-3 over Sweden. And now it's time for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Converse. Ray, when was it in that game between Sweden and Canada? So seven's come up lucky for Pat Ryan, and in the seventh end, he scored a big four points. And Thomas Norton was trying to get something going here, and he wrecks on this front rock. And Pat Ryan ends up scoring four points in the seventh end, and that's our turning point. And Pat Ryan went on to win it by a score of seven to three. A cash donation will be made to amateur sport on behalf of TSN and Converse. Reach for the stars with the energy wave by Converse. Now let's take a look at the standings after this sixth round here in Milwaukee. Switzerland, Scotland, the only unbeaten rinks at three and zero, followed by Denmark, Norway at two and one. Then it's Italy, Germany, Sweden, Canada, and France, all one and two. And USA now, the only winless rink. Jim Vukic from Seattle is zero and three. More when we return to Milwaukee in just a minute. He's got a V-fib. I'm going to shock him with the paddle. 